My name is Olivia Gdanitz, for those of you guys who don't know me, and today we are going to chat with Erica Gelman, who is an interior designer. So hi everybody, welcome, welcome. I'm just going to start off by asking you some questions, Erica. Yeah. Some that I have thought of and some that people have submitted. Okay. And then we'll just go through that and you can answer as much or as little as you want and no pressure. <laughs> so I know with- I'm um, here. I know with interior design, I just the whole design process intimidates me so much. I don't understand the rules of it all. My house kind of came together, but that was more of a trial and error situation of me shopping, bring it back, yes, no. <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of like, ah. So I want to ask you, what are some rules, the golden rules that people can implement in their homes right now that are just things you notice? So the truth is there no, there's no rules. There's no real rules. There's principles that professionals follow, um, but there's no real rules. And, and the, really the best spaces are the ones that have the rules broken anyways. So, um, but I mean, for me, if I were to, to kind of give you our little kind of basic principles that we will follow, um, number one, don't go into a store and buy everything that matches. <laughs> um, you're doing, you're, you're, all you're doing is basically taking that little vignette and bringing it to your home. And ha there's like no personality in there. There's no, um, there's, you know, it's, it's done to look really pretty in the showroom, but then in your home, it can just, it can a completely fall flat or B it can just look like, you know, exactly what it was like a, a vignette in a showroom, which has like no real purpose in your house. Um, I I'm all about really, taking my clients um, kind of their vision of how they want to live in that home and really transferring it into their home. And for me, that's, that becomes kind of like, it's almost like a collection of pieces and not to say it's a collection over time. Cause some people like to do things right away, but a collection of pieces meaning that everything really flows together and works really well together, but it's not like a set. So, I mean, right. that would be kind of like the first thing that I would say. And that goes with any part of your house, any part, like your dining room, you, you know, we used to have, we used to see all these like dining tables with like a matching credenza and then usually like some matching sideboard or something like that. I mean, that principle is like for us, we will, we would never have anything that's matching. Again, it can coordinate, but it really needs to have its own distinctive personality and its own distinctive piece. And the color doesn't even have to be exactly the same, but there has to be a common thread between the two. So, um, and again, that could work in your bedroom. It could work um, in your family room. Like it's very, very rare for us to ever bring in two pieces that are an actual set. Um, but just through really good design and layering, we turn it into a duo or a trio or, you know, whatever it is, but it's, it's absolutely not ever meant to be like conjoined. It's always meant to have its own little like space and purpose in the house. Yeah. And it gives it personality for sure. Right. Yeah. So what's an area in the house? Like someone could start with say that's not so much pressure like a bedroom or a kitchen like what can I do right now <laughs> to add some flair to a part of my house Okay, so I think what everyone should be doing, myself included in this, um, because, you know, how many times have you said this year, last year, throughout the years, I wish I had more time to organize? Yes. Right? I feel like I feel like that is like such a common want that we we all really you know like you open up your pantry and you're, you're like oh my god I need to go buy those like plastic bins and have everything really nicely organized this is the time to do it um Amazon is amazing for that so I think that's you know if you want to start small and again no pressure organize stuff it will actually make such a huge difference and it also makes a huge difference in your storage capabilities which will then reflect onto what you actually see throughout the house because if you create more organized storage and now you have more room and maybe you, you have a whole bunch of like little like knickknacks and little chechkas everywhere um, and you really don't want to see them i I'm telling you right now, I don't want to see them because they're just creating clutter. Yeah. Um, now is the time for you to, you know, declutter those things and keep things really organized. And um, that's something like really small and maybe not so much interior design, but I think it's almost like a stepping stone that gets you into interior design. Um, but if you do want to tackle something in your house right now, Again, it's, it's probably the most perfect time to do that because we all have a little bit more time on our hands right now. <laughs> um, so 
the way that if I'll kind of take you through the steps that what we would do um, if you were to work with a designer and I'll kind of give you our little like our, our little tips and tricks. Um, so what we normally do is start off with a plan. You cannot do anything without a plan. Go through your house and just choose a room. So whatever room feels kind of the le the least intimidating. Um, so maybe something that you could possibly do on your own. Um, do an inventory list. So really stand there with like a pen and a paper and write down every single element that needs to be tackled in that room. So if you let's say we're talking about bedroom um, and you really want new sheets. <laughs> Write down new sheets, new pillows, um, new insert, drapery, whatever it is, um, just make a list and so you can visually see it and automatically that will almost make you accountable to now, okay, so let me check mark this thing. Yes, we have it or no, we don't have it or let me get to it. Um, so start off with a plan always. Uh, the second thing is take measurements of your space. So I can't tell you how many times um, these kind of like weekend warriors. And if you're one of them, kudos to you. But <laughs> I feel like that's one of the biggest kind of problems or um, that that kind of makes the difference between the professional spaces and the ones that are like the DIYers, weekend warriors. And again, if you're doing it, great. Um, but just do it right. So take measurements. You cannot do anything without knowing how big something or how little something can be in that space. So for us, we start off with a floor plan. You might not necessarily have like an AutoCAD uh, program, but if you take a measurement of everything and if you're going to start doing kind of like your online shopping, and again, best time to do that right now, um, just almost like like draw something in, doodle it in, um, just so you can kind of see configurations. If you can, and if you're like, if you're really serious about getting new pieces, I would also order um, a grid paper because those grids, those little squares, mm -hmm. they're actually, you can convert them to like one foot. So take your measurement and then draw it out on a grid piece of paper. Again, you can just get that from Amazon. You know, just clean out the box before before it arrives at your door <laughs> and that's it and then you can start and then that's kind of your like that's how you're going to be able to play with like your scale and your proportions and your proportions are going to actually be one of the biggest thing in the room that if it's done properly you'll be able to feel it i um, seeing something you know anyone can throw in a, a cute pillow but having the room proportionately scaled that's going to be kind of your almost like the next level for you if you are doing it on your own. Yeah, um, and if I could just jump on into that, if you yeah. guys are just still super intimidated, like start with a laundry room where you're not attached to everything in that room. Like rearrange things. It's usually a smaller space. Organize that and then start with something that's a little less intimidating. That's where I think I would start with. Laundry room. Yeah, that's a really good one. I feel like people don't have that like emotional connection to the laundry yeah. room. Um, it's funny because at one point I had, um, before I, I got married, um, I was living in what I called like my little like chick pad. So I had a pink sink in my laundry room and I did it because I knew that, that was kind of the only time I was going to be able to have a pink sink in my laundry <laughs> yeah. room. Um, and I, I thought like, that was the one thing that I was actually like so emotionally attached to was that sink. Like I, I was okay to let the house go, but the <laughs> Not the sink. sink, right? Um, so, but the laundry room is one of those like really cool spaces. Same thing with a powder room. Powder room is a little bit more, I think, challenging, but a laundry room for sure. And you can also do fun things like if you don't want to make that jump into like investing into big pieces, decals is great um, for the walls if you want to instead of wallpaper. So that could be like a really good alternative is even like hop on Etsy and um, see what, what you can purchase from there. But decals will make such a huge difference. And if you don't want to necessarily have like a wallpaper look, you can always do. Um, I remember one of my clients, she, we did like this, this stunning laundry room and then she got these like baskets and put decals on them and said like clean, dirty, um, like need to fold, like cute stuff like that. Um, same thing with like blacks. Uh, or like darks, colors, whites, you know, stuff like that. Like just like little things to kind of spruce it up and make it feel a little bit more like your own, but at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, but at customized. the same time, like it's a really Love great it. spot to like play. Absolutely. And it's so, I know we already kind of briefly touched on this, but is organization part of interior design or is that two separate worlds? Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. I think so. 
Oh, yeah. I don't think that you can't you can't walk into um, any space. And if it's if it's cluttered, it automatically takes your eye away from the beauty of that space. So organizing for us, although it's not part of actual interior design, I mean, it's not necessarily what we do, but but we do organize our clients stuff. So on our um, load in and on our reveal days, we will like we'll hang clothes in their closet and we'll color coordinate that that's also a really great space. Like if you yeah. have a closet that um, again, that you're not necessarily like you need to not necessarily do anything like structural or, or new pieces or, or like a new millwork or anything in there, organize your closet. It's one of those and, and you can like therapeutic. Can, yes. You can yes. also bring really fun design features into your closet. Um, I actually did an article once on I had a I turned a room into a closet. And um, I was just kind of talking about like really fun things to like personalize it, but at the same time, like design. Um, so I remember, you know, just talking about like furniture, if you can, if you have like space for it, or even if you don't even give a little closet, like put in a little bench at the bottom and like put a pillow in there, or, you know, something that kind of just makes you really happy to like open the door and be in there. But color coordination and that's going to kind of take you back to um i think finding like a really cool personality like trait in whatever space you're in and i think your closet could be one of those spots that you can definitely start with i put in like little lights at the top of like yeah. each section to make it me feel like i'm this boss lady <laughs> yes you know, absolutely like it's luxury in my closet just for me <laughs> Oh, yeah. Any kind of like any detail that's going to feel luxurious to you is going to make such a huge impact. And again, it just it I think it just adds to kind of the value of, of you know, opening up your closet every morning or, you know, we go from our like day pajamas into our night pajamas right now. So I think that, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, having that like little sense of, okay, well, this is like, this is my space. And this is where I'm going to find some of my like, my cool wardrobe pieces. Um, I think that that's like a, a great start. And, and again, it kind of, it, it, it ties the whole like organizing with the like designing of them, of, like of the two spaces, because you can essentially like you could play with color and you can play with little fun like elements and details in there. So I think that could be like a really fun spot to start if, um, if you want to start small. Yeah, absolutely. And I also wanted to uh, quickly touch on slash mention when you have a nicely organized and aesthetically pleasing spot, it links to positive energy, which equals to productivity, which equals to positive mental health. And that's what we all need to just absorb in as much as possible, especially during these times. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It makes such a difference. Such a difference. Well, it's, and like, that's what I was saying with the whole like, you know, organizing for me, it's my pantry. Like I love I think that having everything um, in like clear jars with like a, a little I don't have this yet. This is kind of just me imagining how amazing my pantry could be. Um, <laughs> with, you know, like having like the words like flour on there or like or rice. Or, you know, like I feel like just it, it would really, it would make cooking meals, all of our meals that we're cooking at home now. I just feel like it's, it's so just easy. so much. Yeah, it's like, it's a, you want to open up your pantry. You want to pull out like something that says, you know, flour on it and then bring it out and like maybe roll out your own pizza. Like I actually made my own dough for the first time in life, um, like last weekend. So I did it yesterday. <laughs> You know, and just it made me happy. And yeah, it was really, absolutely. It was really therapeutic. So, if you guys have a space in your house where, you're, say, you're constantly reaching for something and it's not there, you don't even realize the effect that your space is having on you because that's already an, an imbalance in your life. So that's why it's important to take the time. We have the time right now to yes. just do little steps. But for me personally, I can't really envision the big picture. So. What I want to ask you, Erica, are there some free resources to get some like free 3D design templates? So let's just say I wanted to do a change today, move my bed from this side to this side before I start lugging and changing everything. Is there an app or something you suggest that I can see it? Um, I honestly don't know of any apps just because we don't use them. Like we use um, like actual 3D like rendering systems. Okay. Um, but... I would say if you want to see something a little bit more visual, um, 
create a board for yourself. So we all know and love Pinterest, like for us as well, like we really do, we, we start, we pop on there, we get an inspiration point, um, and then we kind of roll from there. So um, if you wanna start off with something visual, Pinterest is a great spot and you can create a little board for yourself. Um, you don't necessarily like you don't need any apps if you just do it on the computer even if you do something on powerpoint and you find all these images that you really like copy and paste them and then you have this this visual representation of kind of how you want your space to feel i think um, taking inspiration from that like even the littlest things really asking yourself like what is it that i'm drawn to is it the color is it the style um is it the the, the space plan in there and then like i saying if you if you can kind of sketch things out um, or just, again, just measure, I think that that will be a really, like you can look at the way that let's say a space is um, configured in terms of the, the furniture in there and then use that. I would probably measure things out before you're going and lugging things around. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, or, you know, take pictures of your actual space and then you can put those into your, your mood board and then just also see how, your architecture differs from architectures that you're um, that you're perhaps drawn to. Yeah. So if there's something in there, you know, hi. <laughs> um, so if there's if there's something that you're drawn to, it can kind of be the um, almost like your starting point, and and see again how that's different from your space, and then that will almost have that'll be almost like your stepping stone to your next step. Um, but again, I think that like. I'm, I, I wish I knew an app I can I can suggest. I don't know any. Um, well, I was like rearranging my closets when I first moved into my little house right now. Um, Ikea had a kind of a 3D thing to put in their oh. products into the house. So I guess maybe you can put in like standard stuff on the Ikea website. That's something worth looking into. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, if it's, if, if it's, um, if it's to like to if, i think it's it would be to get ikea products and put them into into that kind of um like into their format mm -hmm. um but if you are if you really just wanted to kind of go about it and start pulling from all these other places create a mood board i think that that would really be or, or even a product board so i would start with a mood board and then move that into um like again if you're doing it on powerpoint for instance like just take blank pages Go product shopping right now is the best time, and I'm I'm gonna, I probably um, I don't know if I'm speaking too soon, but I'm gonna assume that a whole bunch of retailers are gonna go on sale very soon. Um, so even you know like screenshot images, copy and paste them, put them in, see how it all works together. Even for us, when we make the littlest changes, um, we always go back into our presentation board. And let's say we're even, we're showing our clients like two different or three different wallpaper options. We'll actually put in um, every single element and then change out the wallpaper in different slides. So you can really get a, Visualize. really get a, oh yeah, you can get a precise image of how it's all gonna work together. Um, and and then because if you just say, oh, yeah, you know, I, I think this would work with that, but but you don't actually see them um, together, I think that that's going to be kind of the, that spot that you might lose out. So, you you know, really seeing them all together, I think, is going gonna, is gonna to help throughout the entire process and definitely to get you to that finish line. Absolutely. And if you're an illustrator, you can always sketch it out. <laughs> or if we miss some tip that you're just like, oh, my God, you can totally use this app. Let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, below. yeah. If somebody knows of an app, um, let us yeah. know. Because again, we okay. So to... I've got a couple more questions for you. Yeah. These will be more like rapid fire, just to close up sure. the session. Okay. So my first one is: Do you ever incorporate like feng shui or any other principles of that sort into your work? Oh, I wish I knew more about feng shui. Um, I, my background is actually Russian and we just have a lot of superstitions. <laughs> it's not feng shui, but okay. just things that um, kind of been like, <laughs> we've just What's been told over and over. Um, so you can't have a mirror facing um, a door because they say that like your money will like come and go. Okay. Um, my mirror is right here. My door is that way. So check. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so that's one of them. And then there's another one that, um, and I don't 
really believe in this one, but I'll just kind of let you know what it is. You shouldn't have the your your door face. So many things with doors. You shouldn't have your door actually facing your bed, like the foot of your bed. Um, it should be on an adjacent wall. Okay. Um, so I I don't really know about that one. It's just I've kind of I've heard it, and people have been like, hmm. Um, let's what else. I'm sure there's so many more, but I, I, I would love to know more about feng shui because I really, I actually do, like, I'm a huge believer in energy. Um, so I really think that knowing those principles can really assist in just kind of, not so much in the actual um, visual design, but I think definitely in the well-being of that space. Absolutely. Okay, next question. Yeah. Is there such a thing as too many paintings in a house or pictures? Um, yes Is and there no. Some proportion like yeah. only have it on two walls not four like um I like the mix like I definitely like the um the idea of like different elements kind of coming together you don't want to make it seem like you live in a museum um <laughs> but at the same time you also don't want empty walls so I think that having um enough things on your wall so you could have you know if you're gonna do maybe like a mirror um, a painting and then perhaps like an image. So it could be like your, a, a family picture or self picture, a selfie if you want, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, something like that for sure. I don't think that you can have too many things. Okay. That's not true. You can't have too many things on the wall if it's not done properly. But if you, you know, like I think that um, art walls and collage walls, I think that they're amazing. And sometimes you'll see all these different random pieces and there could be 20, 30 different images on there. So I think it's just the way that it's done. And I think your proportions are going to be one of those things that are going to help you the most in your space. Absolutely. Okay. So what about in a bedroom? One nightstand, is that okay? Or does it have to be balanced with two? Like, should I, like, I, I like two. Yeah, two. I, I like, I like two. the balance in the two. Unless you have a smaller space and then you want to put something on the other end of that, like a desk or like a makeup table or something. But it should have very similar. Yeah, it should have a similar proportion. So you do have a balanced space um, kind of on both sides of the um, of the bed. Okay, what about in a kitchen? Obviously, it looks great when the counter is free of anything, but is that really practical? What's your feedback? <laughs> um, like an island, you mean? An island or even just like counter space. I know when I'm like selling homes, I'm not a realtor, but I, I move a lot. It's always nice to just have it bare or very minimalistic, simplistic. But it's not oh. practical because you feel like you're living in a hotel or something, having to take everything out, put it back. Yeah. So but it's it obviously funny because better. in a picture, like when you, when we do our professional photography, we usually do clean everything up and then we'll put, you know, um, strategically placed staging items. Um, so, you know, stuff on, on your, on the, um, the counters. I personally actually like stuff on the counters. Like I, I like to see, I'd like to have the house feel like it's actually lived in. Um, but if you wanted to really keep a clean flowers, do a really nice just bouquet of flowers in the middle of an island. Oh, Olivia, I don't know what happened to you. I'm still here. I'm oh, hoping it will readjust. But okay. I'm listening to you. Okay, okay. It's just <laughs> the air. It's the Erica show right now. Um, yeah, exactly. It's the Erica show. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, amazing. Even if you have a really nice like KitchenAid mixer, I think that those always look really. They, they look, they're strategically placed in photo shoots also, but I, I actually kind of like them because usually they're really colorful, so they do add a pop of color. Um, you really, you don't want to walk into a kitchen and feel like it. nobody lives there and it's super stark. And unless you just love that minimalistic feel and the rest of your house is like that, but I don't think it's realistic for the everyday person. For sure. I what think if it adds a little bit of warmth also. Absolutely. I love, yeah, I love feeling like people are living in the house, although it looks pretty in a picture, but yeah, to, to be in a place you want to feel like it's a home, right? Yeah. Even like in, in our kitchen, like we have open shelves and even on those open shelves, like it's not just about um, having stuff that's like relevant to the kitchen, but I have a picture on there of the family, like, and that's in my kitchen. Cause I, I really do want it to feel like it's part of the home. Like it's not just like a pretty little kitchen space. Absolutely. And wallpaper. I see it's coming back. I remember when I was a kid putting it up and then all these years I wanted nothing to do with it. And now I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe. Is that here to stay? What's what's happening? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Has wallpaper ever really left? It's just, <laughs> wallpaper has come in, I think, different forces. So in like the 60s, it was like, you didn't even see wall space. Everything went from wallpaper to matching fabrics that matched your wallpaper. So it kind of looked like you were in this just crazy illusion space. Um, but wallpaper, yes, wallpaper is huge. Um, it's one of those things that really add a huge dimension into your space. Um, so it could be anything that's just textural. So it could be something like um, a grass cloth or a um, almost like I know we were showing this I have it kind of just sitting around it's, um, it's almost like a vinyl lacquered vinyls are really cool because they're super easy to clean um, things like oh Aiden that's my niece hi um, so you know it's just anything that's like that's a really nice texture to really bold prints to really colorful prints I think that it's one of those things that Although it can be a big investment into your space, yeah. um, it's also one of those things that will add so much character more than anything else. So if you really want to keep your um, investment safe on all your like big pieces of furniture and then do something really fun, it, you can do that by incorporating wallpaper into your space. But yes, it is here to stay. It is not just for walls, it's for <laughs> ceilings. We are now starting to wallpaper on furniture too. We're what? actually gonna make, yes, yes. That's um, news to me. <laughs> yes, it's um obviously you need like you, you need you need to know what you're doing. So we're not doing it ourselves. It's our professional furniture makers that are doing it. But um again, wow. just adding that like additional element into into your furniture and not just keeping it kind of um you know, now you, you see a lot of like furniture that has different colors on them. Um it could even be like a coffee table that has like a, a two tone or made with two different materials, but now we're actually adding that third element or even fourth element of wallpaper just to finish it off, give it a really cool hint of personality um, and really make it unique so for us it's always about how can we curate something that's going to be one of a kind every single time yeah and that's what I value like on my day-to-day -day life so anything that's luxury right personalization yeah. customization I love it so as we're finishing up this session if you guys have a specific question for Erica I think you're still doing those design consults on your Instagram. yes you want to yes. tell us how they can reach you? Yeah, so I'm Erica underscore Gelman, um, G-E-L-M-A-N, and I'm doing isolation consultations. So because we're all isolated in our homes, so I thought it'd be really fun to have a little bit of a, a little escape. And because we're all looking at our homes and saying, oh my gosh, I wish I could change that or that's going to be my next project. So send me your pictures, send me your questions. Oh, hello, my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's so, like, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> you want to come in and say hello? No. <laughs> he's camera shy. Um, so yeah, we're all looking at our own spaces and I think trying to get to like that next step. So again, send me your pictures, send me your questions, and we will schedule a live consultation from your space. Um, and totally free. Like it, it's just so we're all kind of in this little escape together. Yeah, and I did it, so it was yes. fabulous. And if you guys decide to rearrange anything in your home, snap a photo, tag us in it. We would love to see and maybe offer some more feedback. But we're all in it together, guys. So yes. thank you so much, Erica. I really thank appreciate you. your time. Thank, thank you for you having for me. tuning in, everybody. Thank you for watching till the end. I feel so grateful that you took the time. Thank you. Thank you. Did I say thanks?